our next story from the New York Post. Powerful men are scared about what Ghislaine Maxwell will say. Fun follow-up to our Jeffrey Epstein story from yesterday, as well as another one we've got here about Prince Andrew in particular. But to the New York Post, Jeffrey Epstein's victims have another shot at justice. Here's hoping they get it. Ghislaine Maxwell, the alleged child sex trafficker and abuser in league with Epstein, was finally arrested Thursday morning. Her guilt in the court of public opinion isn't in question. The only question is, will the federal government keep Maxwell alive to stand trial? There's good reason conspiracy theories still swirl around Epstein's suicide nearly one year ago in a downtown federal prison, a prison, by the way, that safely housed Bernie Madoff, the 1993 World Trade Center bomber, El Chapo, and a terrorist who told the New York Times it was tougher than Guantanamo Bay, and he would know because He's been held in both. It stands to reason that the federal government should be able to contain a socialite. At the time of his death, Epstein was likely the most high-value prisoner in federal custody. He had ties to incredibly powerful men who had everything to lose if they were exposed. He was that most vile of criminals, a pedophile, a child molester, a rapist, and a sex trafficker. Maxwell is the last chance these victims have at justice. Epstein's suicide was just another brutal victimization. The federal government, if only out of its own self-interest, cannot let a prisoner, cannot let a prison suicide uh, or sui- suicide, in quotes, depending on what you believe, happen again. Now, did uh, we know that Epstein didn't kill himself? Like one way, like. And if he did actually physically kill himself, that there was some other manipulation involved, that he didn't choose to kill himself. But I'm I'm much more inclined to believe that they that they put in a body double. I mean, I know that's that's the the, the more that's the less plausible theory of the two remaining. I mean, the two other theories he got he was killed, or they, they he got snuck out, one way or another, right? And him getting killed is sort of less complicated, right? There are less stretches of, of plausibility in that theory that, you know, that snuck someone in, you know, uh, faked the day or they, they, they choked him, made it look like a hanging, right? Because there was a broken bone in his neck that showed, you know, basically proved, right? And this is just really sloppy suiciding work here, Mrs. Clinton. Like, really, that, that, you, you know, and by the way, I, I, now I have to put out my disclaimer. I am not now, nor have I ever been suicidal. Uh, you know, but th- that she didn't get the corner in on this and, and to just bury that part. They, they let it be known that there was a broken bone in his neck. I mean, maybe again, this is they wanted that to get out somehow. They, they're sending a message. Look, we can do this and still get a, make it obvious and still get away with it. I'm not like I'm not saying he definitely got snuck out. I'm just saying I'm, I'm more inclined to believe that theory now than he was killed in jail because of everything that has happened around it. But why did it take a year for them to arrest Maxwell? Right? What? Like they, they had, this is like no new evidence, no new revelations. Maybe some new testimony. I don't know. But they could have arrested her a year ago. They they certainly had. I mean, as the government you know, ability to, to charge someone with something to get them locked up so they're not out. They could have done that. Now, she, she's obviously not like a threat. It's like she's out doing what she was doing since the since Epstein died or whatever happened to him. Um, so here the article goes on. Maxwell must be treated as she is, as high value as Epstein, as dangerous and sneaky, kept under the strictest 24-7 suicide watch. Here's a detail that should make prosecutors and prison guards nervous. In the recent Netflix documentary, Jeffrey Epstein, Filthy Rich, a survivor stands outside Epstein's Manhattan townhouse and points to pockmarks in the edifice. Such pockmarks, she says, were all over the interior, the every the entire house, every room, every bed, every bathroom, shower, and toilet. 
was rigged with cameras and audio. Epstein kept a secret room full of monitors and watched his guests in real time. He blackmailed the powerful men who would visit and use his girls. If Maxwell dies in custody, the federal government will take a hit from which it may never recover. This is, well, I mean, that, w that would be a good thing, right? If it was, uh, the but, but you know, the, the, it's not going that way. I, I mean, let's not be so optimistic. They're not going to screw things up so bad around this that everyone's going to go, oh, really? <laughs> Adam's right. The federal government protects pedophiles and is a bracket that shouldn't exist and is holding back humanity. <laughs> totally discredited because of what they did with Elaine Maxwell. No, obviously, like that, that that'd be a nice fantasy. Um, but you know, more interestingly, from this other story, we get some specifics on Prince Andrew from the Mirror. Jeffrey Epstein, victim's lawyer, orders Prince Andrew to speak out as she blasts torture test. High-profile U.S. attorney Gloria Allred is, presenting, is representing many of Jeffrey Epstein's victims, and she's gone public with calls for Prince Andrew to lift the lid on what he knows. A lawyer representing several of Jeffrey Epstein's victims has urged Prince Andrew to tell U.S. authorities what he knows following Ghislaine Maxwell's arrest. Famed U.S. Attorney Gloria Allred appeared on Good Morning Britain today following the detention of the Royals' longtime friend Maxwell in the U.S. yesterday. Allred insisted the Duke of York is subjecting those who suffered at Epstein's hands to a torture test by not speaking candidly about his friendship with the convicted pedophile. She said, the question is, Prince Andrew, when is he going to tell what he knows? He needs to do that. He needs to do it without delay. It is so traumatizing and difficult for the victims not to know the truth. And if this kind of and this kind of torture test that Prince Andrew is subjecting the victims to, like, will he or won't he give a statement? If he will, when? More excuses, more delays. It really is painful for many of the victims. It's just not fair. And wow, this is uh, Attorney Gloria Allred again doing a, an amazing job as a attorney in the court of public opinion taking advantage of the platform she's she's uh you know really good whether you like her or not uh she's you know and, and some of the causes i you know i think she's taken on legally i, I certainly wouldn't support uh if, if this is if this one is what it seems though this is certainly entirely righteous and good for her for taking this case and going after it with this vigor and and using every means available uh including the the court of public opinion to pressure prince andrew into making a statement. This might be, uh, you know, the, the the thread of the sweater uh, un unraveling, perhaps. Maybe that's optimistic. But you see what's happening here is that before this, for, for Prince Andrew and the victims, it was like, well, yeah, when is he going to say anything? But they didn't have any leverage. Now that Maxwell has been arrested, now that there has been the clearance for them to sue the estate, $500 million approximately, uh, valued estate of Jeffrey Epstein himself, there is a whole other legal cause in the United States that allows an attorney like like Gloria Allred to play this particular legal point and say, we need to subpoena him, he needs to testify, it's relevant to this immediate legal case to determine whether or not these, these young women have, uh, or formerly young women, depending on when they were involved, uh, you know, whether they, they have this case uh, against the estate. And what this might do, and, 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 you know, we saw from, uh, you know, from, from Prince Andrew, some pretty careless handling and, and statements on, uh, on this PR wise. Uh, this might be a moment for him to put his foot in his mouth in a way that incriminates him and others, you know, who knows where this goes. Back to the story, Prince Andrew has also faced claims he's failed to cooperate with U.S. prosecutors through the course of the investigation, but he's insisted officials at America's Department of Justice have turned down his offers of help. Yeah, right. Andrew previously said in a statement, quote, I continue to unequivocally regret my ill-judged association with Jeffrey Epstein. Of course, I'm willing to help any appropriate law enforcement agency with their investigations if required. Lawyers for the Royal later added the Duke of York has on at least three occasions this year offered his assistance as a witness to the Department of Justice.